People said that the internet was a fad in 2000. And so I would say, I understand why they think that. And they're right, 99% of the NFT projects that came out during that bull run are likely not gonna succeed. But 99% of the iPhone apps that were made during the explosion of iPhone apps, 99% of websites have failed. 99% of startups. 99% of people do not become social media famous. So, you know, I understand why they say that, but um, I, I don't think we've even started. Well, thanks, Gary. Great to meet you. Now, I'm uh, fascinated by NFTs, so I wanted to ask you, when was your first aha moment with NFTs? Well, there was there were several, like, you know, the, the real aha was probably in February of 2020, right? When, when I looked at CryptoPunks, I was like, wait a minute, this is like really the real deal. Like, I was kind of in the backdrop aware about NBA Top Shot, but I knew that that wasn't, um, that wasn't like Ethereum or, you know, once I understood, because I was aware of Ethereum and Bitcoin and yeah, so I would say fe January, February of 2020, when I started doing the homework of what had happened in the last six to nine months with CryptoPunks, it became obvious to me and I was like, there's something here, here. And uh, so that's that was my big aha. Like just, it was right before Valentine's Day. So probably February 7th, 10th, that range, after a series of about 20, 30 hours, I'm like, okay, this is pretty big. Right. And you went ahead and created your own NFTs. What was the biggest lesson you learned from that? That's a great question. Um, it was less about, I'll give some thought to answer you directly. I'll tell you what was affirmed to me of things that I already kind of knew. One, that new technologies take a long time for the masses to understand. And we still got a long way to go for people to really learn about NFTs. I think that um, that it would take a long time. That I still think we're seven to 10 years away from people mass adopting NFTs as a collectible that's digital. What do you think should happen uh, for people to adopt it? What do you think needs to happen? Time. Like in 1996, when I, 1997, when I launched winelibrary.com, like, I believe that people would buy things on the internet. And by 2000, most people were still not buying things on the internet. And by That's 2000. Right. And so, you know, like what happens is people get used to new technologies. Most people can't explain the difference between a centralized or decentralized server. You know, in a world of misinformation right now on the internet, people don't realize the blockchain is gonna be the solve. Like there's gonna be unlimited deep fake videos of everybody running around the world in five years. How are you gonna know if I'm saying this or if this is now me being manipulated by AI saying this? The answer to that question is because every time I upload content, I'm gonna upload on the blockchain to prove that I posted it. And then you'll be able to affirm it by connecting the blockchain and the internet. There's so much coming that people don't understand. The NFT thing was cool for me because I like collectibles and this was digital collectibles, which meant you couldn't have counterfeit. There's no fake BeFriends collectibles. Like you can see that it's not from BeFriends. Meanwhile, there's unlimited fake Rolexes and Michael Jordan rookie cards and art. This is a profound layer of truth. So, you know, every contract, every contract, will sit on the blockchain. And so it's gonna be fun. And after, shortly after you created your NFTs, we entered uh, a bear market. Was that hard to navigate? How did you navigate it? For me, a couple things worked out. In the height of the bull market, I started making videos saying 99% of these things are going to zero. Mm -hmm. So for me, one, it was great to be able to, you know, have those receipts. Two, for be friends going down in value, you know, I don't want that to happen for the people that are collecting them, but I'm not in control of that. That's the market. And what I'm in control of is building the universe. So, you know, the way I've handled it was focusing on what I can control. You know, in life, you can control a lot of things and a lot of things you cannot control. 
And so I've just been very hyper-focused on getting people to fall in love with vBrands. And during this time, been focused on physical executions, showing up to Comic-Con, trading cards, trading card games, pins, stickers. Uh, I'm actively working on kids' books and animations. And so I'm excited about that. Oh, fantastic. Now, some people, I've been reading a lot of headlines, and they're saying that NFTs are dead. What do you say to these people? You know, people said that the internet was a fad in 2000. And so I would say I understand why they think that, and they're right. 99% of the NFT projects that came out during that bull run are likely not going to succeed. But 99% of the iPhone apps that were made during the explosion of iPhone apps, 99% of websites have failed, 99% of startups, 99% of people do not become social media famous. So, you know, I understand why they say that, but um, I, I don't think we've even started in the macro. In the micro, yes, there's many projects we can point to that won't be alive. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think is the biggest misconception about NFTs right now? That they're beanie babies and that what they really are are all stuffed animals. Got it? Yeah. I don't but where are they really if you had to describe it to people, if you had to sell the idea? Well, I don't, I don't like to sell ideas, um, but if I had to explain to somebody what it is, it's a digital asset. Like, because if you and I, if I asked you to show me your money 70 years ago, you would have it in your wallet, some of it. You would have it under your mattress or in your house, some of it, and you would have some in a bank. Yeah. You know, so I think, I don't think people understand that most of the things they own are digital. So what do I think? I think it's a digital asset. And I think digital assets matter. And I think that people haven't seen it play out yet. But there was a day and age when people laughed at wine being collectible. 100 years ago, you would buy wine for a dollar and you drink it. And then at some point, people were like, wait a minute, that's a good year and I'm gonna put it here and in 15 years, somebody wants to buy that for me for 20 bucks because they can't get anymore and it became collectible. You know, a long time ago, trading cards came out and you know, only 60 years ago, people put these, they play with them, they put it in their bicycle to make a sound like a motorcycle and then in the late 70s, early 80s, people were like, wait, I want that, I wanna pay you for that. You know, art. There was a day and age where humans made art physically and they weren't collectible. Right. And then they became collectible. So, you know, I think, I think digital collectibles are very clear to me. I think people will collect them for the rest of all time. There are many people who are buying digital collectibles today. We had a crazy greed fest that clouded everyone. But NFTs are much bigger than digital collectibles. They're smart contracts. They're non-fungible tokens, they're affirmation, they're truth. I'm positive one of my driver's license before I die will be on the blockchain as an NFT. It'll be issued by the state of New Jersey on the New Jersey blockchain. And like, you know, that'll be my life. Like, I just don't think people really think about what a credit card is or, you know, what a web, owning a website looks like. Like, do you own your website? Yes. Show them. Like, I don't think people have comprehended the physical collectible or contract yet. Absolutely, I agree. Now, some people thinking of creating their own NFTs, what advice would you give them since you've created a few? To know how to create demand. You know, the biggest thing that is, hurts people in creating things is they don't know how to get people to be interested in them. Mm -hmm. So it's great to do anything, but if, no, if you want to, now, that's if you want to sell them and do something with it. So create, how to create demand. And about NFT domains, uh, do you think they will replace .com domains? The truth is I don't like to talk about things that I don't know and I've not spent enough hours in the NS and that world and so the answer is I'm not sure. I just have not spent enough time. How different is the web going to look like with AI and Web 3.0? I'd love to pick your brains about your predictions if you have any. I mean, AI and blockchain are the two biggest technologies that are gonna change everything. I mean, the internet, is constantly changing because it's a reflection of society. And, and I really do think AI 
is gonna lead to a lot of videos that aren't real. And video has always been real. So I, I, I think that there's a lot of things we're about to have to figure out. And so I anticipate a lot of change. VR is looming. Like the world's gonna change. People always think technology stops when they're grownups. But technology is always going on. And so in the same way that kids make fun of their grandma about the fax machine or a beeper or a flip phone, well, their kids are gonna make fun of them about the iPhone and social media. It's always changing. So I expect a lot of change. All right, thanks so much. Thanks so thanks. much. Cheers. Hey everybody, it's Gary Vee and you're watching Think Smart Education. I appreciate all of you at Think Smart Education getting this FaceTime plea and educating everybody in Web3.